So we've got a, a supernatural revenge thriller yes. here. Can you tell us more about it? Because it does sound intriguing. Um, the film is called Johnny Frank Garrett's Last Word, and it basically takes place in 1968 is when the story starts, and on, in Amarillo, Texas, on Halloween, a, a 76-year-old nun was raped and murdered in her bedroom in her convent, and the police very quickly arrested a, a young man, a 17-year-old kid actually, called Johnny Frank Garrett. He, he always maintained his innocence, but he was... Um, taken to court, he was sentenced for the murder and rape and was subsequently executed about a decade later after all his appeals had failed. And, and on the evening of his death he wrote a curse letter, which I, I've actually held in my hands, um, which um, says that he's going to revenge all the people who put him uh, into that position. And there, thereafter in Amarillo, people mysteriously started dying um, and, and it's a true story. Say, yeah, it's based on a true story, so there must be a huge sense of responsibility for you as a director to tell this honestly, especially when he, he's potentially been wronged as well. Yeah, yeah, very much so. You know, it, it's 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 a very fine line between making something for Hollywood entertainment, you know, and, and popcorn, um, and actually re remembering that there is a real life, uh, you know, story with real people, both both the the nun that was raped and and the man who was. Um, you know, by most accounts, unfairly executed. And um, but you know, we we premiered in South by Southwest, and his family came along to see it. His his mother and two sisters are, are very much alive, and and so I was incredibly nervous as to what they would say um, and think. But they they actually loved the film because they they, they saw it as, as just another way to try and you know get get his name out there in the public domain again because they, they they've been struggling for well the, the better part of 30 years to try and clear his name with. with with, without much success, but um, there, there's an amazing documentary about the, the, the more legalese aspects of it called The Last Word, which which has all these things. And if you watch that, it's just kind of jaw dropping, really. Um, I mean, we don't have capital punishment here, but did you know? Did you see? Was <laughs> because we don't have it in our day to day lives. Did you, did you see capital punishment in a very different light? When yeah, you very, very, well, very much so. It's 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 kind of funny because I say not having it here. It's it's always something that I, I kind of hadn't given it that much thought and it's always like well if if, if the guy if, if the person being punished is really bad then maybe they, they should get get executed but but then making this film investigating a, a, the, the, the case and actually seeing how this boy was essentially railroaded it, it, it's you, you, one one I suppose very naively naively has has a kind of faith in in the judiciary and and, and in the system that that puts people to their death but you Realize well. I, I realized having done this that that was a completely stupid and naive assumption, and that, that you know, many people are doing things not on on a on a rational basis, but on on their own subjective um, thoughts and opinions, which, which may be right but are, are not wrong. And that's not you know the the, the basis of law is a kind of a, a cornerstone of objectivity. So so yeah, to be honest, actually, it completely changed my um my my, my perspective on corporal punishment because because you're always relying on someone else to to punish someone else and 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 it's just it's just wrong really and because the, the film is such a dark undertone to it and, and it's based in fact how did that then affect the um, the visual aspect of the film and how you wanted to tell it visually mm. well you know as, as a director you know you, you come to every film differently you, you interpret every film differently and and you know the, the visual as, or visualization of the film is something which is one of my key you know, jobs as a director and, and um, you know with this film we actually gave it a very yellow tint um, just you know looking back at pictures from the 1960s you know they're all faded and, and certainly the ones we saw just you know had this kind of nicotine feel so, so we, we gave it to begin with a, a very dirty nicotine thing to, to give it you know a sense of um, yeah, um, kind of history, really, um, and, and then and then most of the film is actually set in the, in the late seventies, so so it's less it's less yellow, but it's still it's still you know a little bit. Um. Something that you, that you'd always um, had had as a vision in the in the beginning, and therefore you you lit that as practically as possible, and then sort of tweaked it in post. Yeah, I mean, I mean, nowadays with you know technology as such, that actually a lot of stuff 
in terms of grading is, is well, and visualization is more something that you do in the grades. So, and 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 with a with with your cinematographer, it, it's often about getting getting just a clean negative where everything is 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 visible and and um and so the guy who shot this is a guy called Milton Cam who I've worked with. On, on like eight films, I think this is our eight film together. So he's someone that you know, he's, he's a good friend and a, 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 a great friend and a great collaborator. And, and um, you know, um, yeah, it's kind of you know he's always a big part of of that. And